NAD, the topic of today, NAD+. Plus. It's the youth molecule depleted by inflammaging. And for those of you who say, well, doc, you're pronouncing it wrong. It should be inflammaging. Sorry, maybe I'll use one way one time and the other the other. What is NAD in the first place? The long term is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Easy for me to say, huh? It's a coenzyme found in all living cells. It promotes cellular energy production and metabolism. It exists in two forms, NAD plus and NADH. You may recognize that if you get into your high school chemistry, what we're talking about here is a difference of an electron. NAD plus picks up an electron to become NADH and NADH donates an electron to become NAD plus. Now, where does that happen? Mostly in the mitochondria. If you look at this image here, this orange and yellow thing, that's a obviously oversimplified image of a mitochondria. Again, those of you who took maybe high school bio, I mean, uh, well, high school, but for sure college level biochemistry, maybe some of this stuff will start coming back. You remember glycolysis and then the Krebs cycle where you go into the mitochondria, the mitochondria starts taking a carbon off of that TCA, tricarboxylic acid cycle. As it takes those carbons off and replaces those with those carbon-carbon bonds with electron bonds, you get energy. It pulls energy out of that molecule. That's what gives us energy. And that process uses oxygen. The fact that it uses oxygen makes it much more, it creates a huge advantage for us over other life forms like yeast, Yeast can't do that. So out of a typical glucose molecule, yeast will pull six energy units. Whereas humans using oxygen and this tricarboxylic acid TCA cycle will pull like 36. And I've gone off script here. Let me go back on script. This continuous give and take of electrons generates energy used to power various biological processes. NAD plus has gone from being a metabolic player to a crucial substrate required by sirtuins. Now you may remember that term and that starts to get us to David Sinclair. David Sinclair, an Australian who moved to the U.S. to work at Harvard and has become a globally acknowledged anti-aging expert. He's done a lot in terms of the discovery of sirtuins and they are proteins that help us control longevity. There are lots of supplements aimed at restoring NAD plus to youthful levels like NMN, which you'll hear more about in this discussion today. Now, which ones actually work? This is one of the places where I'd say this is not really an advertisement for NMN or for David Sinclair. I've personally tried NMN. I use niacin a lot still in my patients and personally. I've used some other supplements, all of which revolve around this niacin base, NAD, which is a niacin base as well. Unfortunately, NAD plus levels decline with age. That's what the problem is. And that's why everybody keeps circling around the mitochondria and NAD, which is part of the major substrate or fuel or energy transfer molecule that's used by the mitochondria. Here's the title of the article, by the way, senescent cells, that's old and dying cells promote tissue NAD plus decline during aging via the activation of a CD38 plus macrophage. That sounds extremely technical. We're going to get a little bit technical, but we water this down a whole lot, much more for our level viewer. And our level viewer is not really a sixth grader, but more of a, a health nut, somebody who wants to live a long time and knows that if they depend on their local primary care doc, they may not be getting the information that they need. So this is the level of information that we're presenting. It's out of nature metabolism. And as you know, the nature magazines are globally some of the absolute best magazines for science in the world today. It's nature metabolism, November, 2020 and it uh, supports this discussion of NAD plus degradation. Buck Institute, you may have heard of Buck Institute. That's where Dale Bredesen, you know, the end of Alzheimer's guy, he does a lot of work there at the Buck Institute. Those researchers at Buck Institute have identified inflammaging or age-related chronic inflammation as a driver of NAD plus decline. Mechanism one, aging and bouts of inflammation lead to the accumulation of pro-inflammatory, you know, 
or in, inflammatory M1 like macrophages, a certain type of immune cell. That's what a macrophage is. Metabolic tissues like liver and visceral fats. So it's these immune cells, as you see a picture over here, these TCD38s, M1 macrophages impacting and being impacted by these senescent cells. To increase inflammation, increase NADAs, an enzyme impacting NADAs activity. In other words, an in, usually when you see NA, something ACE in a, it's talking about an enzyme and it's also talking about an enzyme that breaks something down. So NADAs is an enzyme that breaks down NAD. So guess what? That final step is a decrease in NAD. Now these macrophages express a protein called CD38. While CD38 is just one of several NAD consuming enzymes, it's a major consumer of NAD+. Here's another mechanism. Aging also leads to the accumulation of senescent cells. Now when the cell is stressed or the DNA is damaged, the cell stops dividing to make new cells. This is called cellular senescence. It's designed to be a proactive or a protective measure against cancer and other diseases. However, senescent cells increase with age. If they accumulate and they're not cleared, ironically, they lead to cancer. Now, speaking of David Sinclair and aging, he wrote a book called Lifespan. I did a series on that book with about, there were about nine videos in that series. One of those videos focuses specifically on senescent cells. Senescent cells do play a positive role. It's a protective role. It's helping those cells and other cells shut down when sometimes cells need to shut down in order to protect themselves. Cancer is a perfect example. Cancer is an overactivity of growth and replication. Senescence helps slow that down. Obviously, you don't want too many cells taking that kind of vacation, slowing down. They can also influence other cells to do exactly that. So the you may want to take a look at that uh, series that I did on Lifespan. Very, very interesting. I've got a major interest in anti-aging, so I'm very interested in a lot of the stuff in that book. It was a great book and a lot of the stuff that Dr. Sinclair does. Senescent cells also produce inflammatory proteins called SASP. SASP drives in M1-like macrophages to proliferate. In other words, replicate, multiply. In mechanism one, these macrophages drive an increase of CD38. Remember that protein that breaks down NAD and later resulting in a decrease of the NAD+. According to Dr. Anthony J. Covarubius, one of the authors and a postdoctoral fellow at a, the Verdon lab, these inflammatory proteins in the SASP, SASP, induce macrophages to proliferate. In other words, it's there's a spiral effect here more macrophages producing CD38, more creating more senescent cells, more senescent cells creating the CD38 plus macrophages. So like many, many things in the body, like clotting, like some inflammatory processes, like this inflammatory process, there's a spiraling effect. A little bit creates more and more and more. It's a maladaptive process, but drugs that target the SASP or CD38 may offer us another way to deal with the decline of NAD+. So we've been talking about the mechanism for aging and disaster and bad stuff happening. Why have we been talking about it? To get to that sentence. Are there ways that we can impact it? Now, obviously, we as our society is, we go too quickly to drugs. And one of the problems that I have with Dr. Sinclair is that he goes to a supplement. He wants to give a pill. He's been quoted as saying that many, many times. I'm going to give you a pill that will keep you from getting sick. continue to get great feedback regarding the webinars and here's why you know on the internet when you hear a webinar you expect for somebody to try to sell you something we're not doing that we're trying to tell you something people are coming in with their labs from quest inflammation panel OGTT insulin survey response and then they're finding out do I have inflammation do I have insulin resistance and where does that fit in terms of other folks we're getting ready to start one for CIMT as well.
So again, people are really excited about finding out their own status. Looking forward to seeing you there. Thanks.